All right. Well, good morning again, everybody. It is awesome to be together today, isn't it? I want to welcome you to church, everyone here that's on site. I want to welcome everyone that's joining us online. And uh, man, it's, uh, it's good to be together for one service today on this holiday weekend. And I think one of the favorite things about having one service for me being up here is just seeing uh, everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people sitting in different seats, okay? <laughs> so if, if you are not sitting where you normally sit, okay, I want you to raise your hand. Who, who are you? You're not sitting where you normally sit. All right. That is awesome. And so everyone else is kind of sitting somewhere in the neighborhood of where you sit. So it's just good character building, isn't it? It's good character building and keeping our attitudes in check that, you know, that we can, we can move around a little bit. So anyways, just having a little fun with you today. Um, man, it, it is, uh, wasn't that some amazing worship? That was great. Yeah. We want to thank our worship team over there, Chloe. Thank you and the worship team. Thank you so much for leading us in worship today. All our dream teamers making church happen today. Um, uh, I want to remind everybody of an announcement we made last week, and that is next Sunday, Pastor Tim waved to us. He's sitting in a different area, too, Pastor Tim way over here. Um, so he was up on the platform with me last week just sharing about the church plant that's coming up uh, next year in Strongsville. And uh, he mentioned that next Sunday after bowl services, next week we're back to bowl services, but after bowl services next week, he's going to be in room five, that room to my right, your left. And uh, just talking, just giving some more uh, information, uh, calling it an interest meeting if you're interested to know more about what is happening with that. So I want to remind you with that. Well, hey, we are in this summer series called Theology. We're already in week four, and we're going to be talking about Bibliology today. We're going to talk about the Word of God, and um, I want to introduce Rob Walgate. Come on up, Rob. Let's just introduce Rob. <laughs> Rob, just stand with me for a minute. Good Rob morning. Rob is going to be bringing the message today, and I love this guy, man. Um, Rob, uh, we are blessed to have Rob and his family here, part of Cornerstone Chapel. Rob is an amazing friend. Um, man of God, um, husband and father, and uh, guys, you can pay me after for that, just, uh, anyways, no, just kidding. Um, He's saying he, all these nice things because he beats me in pickleball every time yeah, we play, would, I think yeah, that's why. you would destroy me in golf, <laughs> yeah. okay, so it's, we're, we're equal there, um, but no, just uh, really have appreciated getting to know Rob over the last several years here, so honored to have you guys planted in this church. Rob serves as the vice president of the American Policy Roundtable, uh, which um, they do the public square radio and uh, voting guides. And uh, just, uh, he, he is just um, someone that I, I trust and I love when you come and just give the word. Uh, about once a year, you bring the message yeah, yeah. and today is one of those days. And um, we're just, uh, we love you guys, and, and so thank glad you. that you're here. Thank you. Bless thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Too kind. Thank you, Pastor Mark, Pastor Dev, the entire pastoral team here. Um, it's an honor to be here in front of you. And uh, being uh, Rachel and RJ and Rosie and I's home church, I'll say that when invited and given the opportunity to speak here, I also know, I don't want to say it's a little bit more pressure, but all of you know me a little bit more well or better than everyone else. So I, I, I do have that, hey, let's go um, attitude and want to make sure we're, we're always prepared and ready. Uh, Pastor Mark mentioned the American Policy Roundtable. We're very blessed to have the partnership that we do with Cornerstone. And the work that we get to do together every year in December, we get to hold Christmas in America right here in this building. And that radio broadcast goes out all across the country, and we're already prepping and looking forward to that. Um, and the work that we do at the Roundtable also has correlation as we approach Independence Day and the 4th of July. You know, we talk about the work that we do at the Roundtable and take the words of the Declaration. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. So you take a look and you read that and see um, the identification of Almighty God right there, right there, and then tie in the Constitution and then bring in some of the Northwest Ordinance and all these things, but always approaching it, always approaching it and taking a look um, 
at it from a biblical worldview. And that's what we try and do. And we're not going to dive into election stuff and all that uh, fun today. But there is a statewide election I do want to mention coming up uh, August 8th. We've talked about it. There's a lot of info. Dare I say is some maybe misinfo going on out there about it. If anyone has any questions on it or needs information, grab me after the service. Shoot me an email. Um, Pastor Mark and everyone has my email. It's free to share it with anyone here. And I will answer any questions and talk about that um, in any way that I can, that I can help. Because we believe that everyone should participate in the process. And when we participate in the process, be educated with the best information that we have available. If we truly love our neighbor, then we care who's serving in authority or what rules of law go in place for our neighbor. So we should be engaged in that. Um, you know, it, when Pastor Mark asked me to come speak as part of the series, it was months ago, right? It was pro- I mean, it was a while ago. And um, he gave me, he talked about the outline, gave me some resources that might help. Uh, but one thing I won't forget is the last Wednesday in May, I woke up. I woke up. I had a dream. I had a dream that I walked up those stairs. I dropped the Bible. I looked at the church and I said, I haven't studied or prepared a thing, so I'm not ready. I'm not sure what we're going to talk about. I woke up cold sweat. Um, I was concerned. Good news is I was fully clothed, so we didn't have to worry about that. But I was like, it was like having those dreams of where you miss your college final or all those things. So I was like, wow, I, I better be prepared and, and ready to go. So we are. But I do want to take a step back, if I may, and I want to talk a little bit about last week. Um, it was talked about the Holy Spirit. It was talked about maybe the Lord working through us. Talk about a little bit, something happened to me uh, a couple of weeks ago. I was driving to a meeting. Um, I was driving to play golf, but that's not important. I was driving somewhere. I was driving somewhere, and the Lord put on my heart, I was getting this nudge to call a certain individual. I I had a 40-minute drive. I had zero desire to call anybody. I wanted to sit in the car, listen to some music, listen to some radio, hang out, be alone, pray a little bit, and do nothing. And I just felt like the Lord just pounding away at my heart, like, you need to call this person. You need to call this person. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Listen, we live in 2023. No one likes getting phone calls anyway unsolicited, right? You look at your phone like, oh, who's calling now? Um, why didn't they text me? So I'm like, I, I don't need to call this person. So finally, I pick up the phone and I call the person. And we have a conversation. And the Lord put on my heart, they had just taken a new job. They're in an area where I have a little bit of knowledge and I have a little bit of understanding what they're going through. I know there's going to be roadblocks and obstacles and things that they may encounter down the line. And I thought, maybe the Lord wants me to call and share that and just open. So I was obedient, which I'm usually not, but I was, and I did that. And um, I said, hey, in this world that you've now ventured into, I need you to be aware of something. And what I need you to be aware of is you're stepping into a world where sometimes you may get hit by friendly fire and you may not see it coming. You may not see it coming. You know, I, I always say, if, if you're going to punch me, at least punch me in the face so we have a chance, right? You'll want to see it coming. You'd rather be punched in the face than stabbed in the back. And I said, just, I, I, I don't know why, I, I'm telling you that. So be wary in this area that you now basically live. And uh, he broke down and started crying. And he said two nights before that, he'd gotten an email where someone was trying to force him off the team, totally blindsided him, and it was crazy what was going on in his life. And it had nothing to do with me, but it was the fact that I kind of wrestled and fought with God for 15 minutes of that drive that I had zero desire to pick up the phone and call somebody. And I looked back and said, here I was, the Lord used me as a messenger to help a brother in need How many times in my life did I ignore the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit was putting something on my heart saying, hey, you need to do this, right? I'm not saying that to pat myself on the back. I'm saying it to say I'm a pretty big sinner who ignores the Lord often. But the first, one of the first times where it blew me away on the impact that it had on him, it also blew me away to the point where I immediately had to call my wife and say, you're not going to believe this because I was so blown away about how the Lord can use us each and every day. To benefit our friends. So 
when the when the message was given last week, that that um, that really hit home because I'd seen it happen in my life. And um, so I'm just encouraging you. If the Lord's talking to you, if the Lord's nudging you, if the Lord's pulling on you, just be obedient to what the Holy Spirit asks you to do. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, let's dive in. Bibliology, the study of the Bible. Um, how does the Lord speak to us? We know he speaks to us through his word. In an ever-changing world, he is the only constant, right? I mean, you think, I think of um, Coach Holtz, one of my favorite people to hear um, speak on any message. Uh, he, shout out East Liverpool, Ohio, my hometown. Coach Holtz is from there, so we've had the opportunity to hear him speak a number of times. But he, he always talks about you're either growing or you're dying. The tree outside is either growing or it's dying. Nothing's really remaining in that constant state. You're moved. It, something's always, always happening. Um, our circumstances are changing, but there's something that, 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 um, that stays, and we know that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, it tells us in Hebrews 13. Forever. He's the constant in our, in our ever-changing lives. So all that to say as well, as I start diving into Scripture and reading notes, I told you about my dream We've got plenty of notes in preparation because that dream scared me. I can tell you that. So, so we're ready to go for a little bit. Um, but he talks to us through his word. Jesus is the hero of Scripture. He's the hero. Now, there are plenty of other, um, shall we say, characters of the Bible. There are plenty of other people in the Bible who are obedient to the Lord that we can talk about. We can talk about Noah. Um, we can talk about Paul. Talk about David. I mean, you can list in your, in your mind those that you can think of that they are sinners like you and I, right? They aren't the true heroes. Jesus is the hero of the Scripture. And we have to make sure that we remember that because sometimes we can get caught up in building someone or something up a little bit higher than it needs to be and keep it in its proper context when it comes to scriptural authority. I even think today... We can see that happen in our lives. How many times do we see something um, where we maybe fall in love with the messenger a little more than we should? We fall in love with someone we see on TV that's delivering, and then that person or that individual may have, they're a sinner. We're all sinners. They may have a moral failure or something that collapses, and then that, that leaves a dent on us like, wow, that, listen, that doesn't change the inherent word of God. Because we fail daily, that doesn't change what Scripture says. So we need to be reminded and we need to understand that Jesus is the hero of Scripture. You're going to hear that, keep the main thing the main thing a few times today. And that's one thing. He's the main thing. We, and we need, to, we need to have that um, in our lives and understand that. The why, for why the Bible, why that being his word, for our joy and our growth. John 17, verse 13, and now I'm coming to you. I've told them many things while I was with them, so they would be filled with my joy. The Lord wants us to have joy. He tells us that repeatedly in Scripture. In the way he speaks to us through Scripture we need to understand that. But we also need to understand, and so many times, me um, included in my life, is when he gives us that joy, or when we have joy in our lives, we need to also understand it's going to be from an eternal perspective, and can't, we can't have that joy that's outside of God's wo word, right? If we're living a life that we think is bringing us um, instant gratification, personal joy in the short term, but it goes contrary to the teachings of the Bible, that's not the joy he wants us to have. We may be happy in the moment as sinners. I've been there. I know that. I do that. I understand that. I live that daily as a fallen person, an individual, but the joy that he wants us to have comes from his word and understanding it. Um, Rachel and I were having coffee a, a week ago, and we were talking about the Bible and about getting joy from the Word. Has there ever been a time, and we talked about this, has there ever been a time in your life 
where whether in the morning or the evening or the afternoon, any time that you've went to the Scriptures, any time you've read from the Bible and you've said, you know what, I wish I wouldn't have read the Bible today. I regret that. Is there anything in your life, think about that. Is there any time you haven't opened it up and went in there, whether it's for 30 seconds or three hours, I don't care what it is. Is there ever a time that you've read from the Bible and say, my day's going to be worse because of that? No. No. It doesn't happen that way. That's where he wants us to be. I'm going to read, maybe, I, I also made a rookie mistake today is, I don't have my cheaters with me, so I may need someone in the front row to hold some of this stuff I read. Um, in the middle of the COVID pandemic, the American Bible Society conducted a large research project to see the impact of engaging with the Bible. They found that those who regularly read the scriptures are better neighbors, more likely to forgive, and have a greater sense of peace than those who are not engaged in scripture. Earthly circumstances may affect our happiness at times, but our eternal joy and abundant life are found in Him. You need the Scriptures to become more like Jesus. And you're becoming like Jesus, and your becoming like Jesus are connected, and they both increase as you immerse yourself in the truth. I thought that was interesting. I mean, COVID, a lot of people kind of sat around twirling their thumbs. Some got really good at video games. Some got good at gardening. Some got, some people found themselves going into the Scripture. And, um, when we go in the scriptures, we know, <laughs> we know how that can be beneficial. Not only to us, but as it says there, um, with our neighbors. What else does the scriptures tell us? It tells us that God breathed for us, right? Let's go to Genesis 2-7. You know, and I, I work in, um, we, we hit those lights down. I won't be able to read this Bible, I can tell you that. And the Lord God formed a man's body from the dust of the ground and breathed into the breath of life. And the man became a living person. So I work for the American Policy Roundtable. We work in the world of public policy, politics. Both parties can't stand us, as all of you know. And some people say, why would you get involved in that world? That's controversial. Would the Lord want us to be involved in anything that's controversial? I just read a scripture where we were created from dust as man, right? Is that controversial? <laughs> Could that be I have a little controversy to it? The thought that Jesus shies away from controversy is a bit of a misnomer. It's in there. It's in there, but he identifies it. So we read the Bible. Um, he created us to do it. He breathed life into us. But why the words? Well, the words are there to increase knowledge, equip us to do good. Scripture corrects our behavior from second timothy all scripture is inspired by god and is used to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives it straightens us and teaches us to do what is right it straightens us and teaches us to do what is right it helps us navigate what we call life and it hits on every aspect of our lives right have you ever I mean think of think of the things where it's correct corrected a behavior and sometimes I don't like having my behavior corrected I think about I call some verses in the Bible sharpie verses and some people think oh you mean you highlight them and I'm like no I take a sharpie and blacken them out because they're very convicting to me I don't really do that I do read them but that's what I want to do because it makes it tough to be corrected. And when you sin as much as I do and you're looking in there reading it saying, man, I got a lot of work to get done. I got a work to do. It cre he tells us the scripture is there to cre correct our behavior. I mean, when we think about it, when you, you think, um, <laughs> I got a note in here to talk about. I, I was deal the Lord was dealing with me on something. And I confided in Pastor Mark about this. Um, and in 1 Samuel um, chapter 15, it talks about, I'm one, sometimes I can get caught. Here, a little confession time. You guys can send me the bill for this counseling session we're about to have. Um, you can be my counselors. I, I, I can get caught 
taking a look at the things that I, that I or we as a family sacrifice, whether it's um, supporting this missionary here, or giving to this organization here, or working for a ministry organization, or paying tuition for a Christian school, or being on the board there, all these things where they're sacrificed, and I get caught, I need ice for my shoulder because I'm patting myself on the back. Well, the Lord dealt with me hard about that, really hard on a few areas, because he was like, obedience, we, we, we read in 1 Samuel, obedience is more important than sacrifice. If you're not being obedient to what he's calling you to do, your sacrifice doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. He wants our obedience. That's what he wants. And our, the great thing about Jesus is he deals with us in the individual. So our obedience here, what he's calling me to do, may be different than what he's called my neighbor to do. When we read the Great Commission and he says, go, go, right? That's an instruction. We're not all robots just down here programmed. Go. He's going to have each of us maybe do something different. He may have one of us go to Africa to be a missionary. He may have one of us take a job in a position to where we're going to be a light in a company that doesn't have a lot of light in it for the employees. He may call someone to go into a pastoral role. It's different for all of us. The key is, the key is he's asking us to be obedient. And how do we find out what's being obedient to him? We find it through the Bible and his word. That's how he talks to us. Theologians describe four attributes of God's word, authority. We know, um, and I'm going to read the verse from the, uh, from the Great Commission. I have been given complete authority in heaven and, and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Go. That's what he's telling us to do. It's his. All of it here, all of it up there, it's all his. He has authority. Those of you remember, I, I believe a couple years ago, that was the sermon I gave. It was on authority, the definition of authority, um, the power to influence, to command thought, to command behavior. Think about those words. Think about the influence that Jesus had. Think about the behaviors that he commands today, right, that he wants to command in our lives. Where do we get those from? We get them from his word. We get them from the Bible. Necessity, that's another attribute. We need scripture to know him and grow in our relationship with him. That's how we grow. How do you grow in any relationship? When you get to know someone, how do you, you got to spend time with them. You got to spend time with them. We got to spend more time. I got to, I, I am looking in a mirror. That's the other problem. Sometimes I look, we look out a window. There's a lot of times as I was preparing for this, I was like, Lord, I know you don't, maybe not have it for anyone in this uh, congregation, but you have it for me. I need to look in the mirror. I need to spend more time with him. That's how I can get to know him better. He knows me. I need to get him to know him better. Clarity. We learn from Scripture. We learn from Scripture. Thinking about whether you were 7 or 8 years old or 57 or 58 years old, when you made the decision to become a believer, when you made the decision to follow Christ, you needed that clarity. You had to learn from it because you didn't understand it, right? The Bible tells us those who don't ha have the spirit of law sound foolish to them. And that's what it does. It doesn't make sense if you're not a believer. But when you come become a believer, it's not like a magic switch where, oh, I've got all this knowledge now. No, no. That's where we need the clarity. That's also where we need mentors and people that walk alongside us and help us and guide us and people we can pick their brains and ask questions about. Um, I asked Pastor Mark an awful lot of questions. I can, rem I can remember when I wasn't a believer. I went away to college, and you, everyone in here has heard my testimony of, I believe, you know, I failed out of three colleges, ended up in a rehab center at 23. It was a pretty rocky path. But I went to a college. I went to a small Christian college that first year, and I grew up in a Christian church, but I just, I, I, it, you know, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't me at that time. And they taught something in a Bible class there. And what they taught, like, really, it wigged me out. I wasn't ready for it. And now I understand it because the Bible tells us I didn't have the Spirit. I wasn't going to understand the Scriptures because I hadn't accepted Jesus. It was going to sound a little goofy and off the wall to me. And I remember it's the first time I ever had a meeting with my pastor back home. I called him. I'm like, I, we need to sit down and talk. And he knew I was searching, I was looking, and the, and the Lord was convicting me um, of my attitude, my behavior, and of my lifestyle. And I was dealing with it. 
um, in a big way. But when I made that choice years later, I needed that clarity. I had to learn from Scripture. Um, Sufficiency. Scripture equips us for good works in this life. Right? I'm not sure I have a... Oh, I do, I guess. Have a, we, you know, it's like saying you have a favorite verse. Is that like saying you have a favorite child? I don't know. Um, do I have a favorite child, kids? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Romans 12, 21. Be not overcome by evil. Overcome evil by doing good. The Lord talks to us about that, right? He talks to us. We, we can read that. Matthew 18, right? When we have, where, this is where it teaches us. This is where it teaches us, Matthew 18, because it teaches us about conflict, right? And how to resolve conflict amongst believers. Have you ever had a conflict with someone who doesn't have moral authority or spiritual authority in their lives, who isn't going to follow the scriptures? Have you ever tried to reconcile with someone who maybe not believe it? Um, that's not the easiest thing to do. It, it, it's difficult. It's difficult. It's difficult to resolve conflict with two believers, right? We're humans. We're fallen. We're going to make mistakes. It causes heartache. It causes pain. But it's laid out. The guidelines are laid out how to fix the problem. We just have to spend time in there learning it. When it comes to spending time with Jesus, is it one thing or distracted by many things? Um, let's go to Luke 10. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a village where a woman named Martha welcomed them into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was worrying over the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you're so upset over all these details. There's really only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it. And I won't take it away from her. Keep the main thing the main thing. I tell you, know, I'm coaching basketball at Medina Christian Academy. I tell the boys, control what you can control. Keep the main thing the main thing. Stay focused. Martha viewed the evening as dinner for Jesus. Mary viewed the evening as dinner with Jesus, right? She understood. Now, I was going to go into a long tirade about how I felt like this was my house when people were coming over, my wife's yelling at me to, there's dirty dishes in there, there's stuff that, there's toys that need picked up, there's wiffle balls and basketballs everywhere, there's all this, but let's keep the main thing the main thing, spending time with Jesus. We have distractions in this world unlike any other. Me, I'm addicted to a little black box that goes in this left pocket, Right? I keep, how many times have we done that? We're, we're supposed to be engaged or getting to know someone, sitting with them, and oh, it buzzes, i got to look at it. That's me. Are we distracted by it? Is that preventing, or what is preventing us from spending time with Jesus? That's what I wrote down and asked myself. What are the distractions in my life that are preventing me from spending time with God? Um, through his word, God reveals himself to us. He wants to be known. He tells us that. He tells us that um, in his words. Psalm 19, the heavens tell of the glory of God. The skies display his marvelous craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. They speak without a sound or a word. Their voice is silent in the skies. Yet their message has gone out to all the earth and their words to all the world. The sun lives in the heavens where God placed it. It bursts forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding. It rejoices like a great athlete, eager to run the race. The sun rises at one end of the heavens and follows its course to the other end. Nothing can hide from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decree, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise and simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear giving insight to light. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. Think about that. If we read the first 10 verses every morning of Psalm 19, um, that wouldn't be bad, right? How, does, how, how do we identify with the Lord 
there through his words is creation. His creation. We've all probably been somewhere, whether it's out in the woods locally, or maybe it's the Grand Canyon, or maybe it's somewhere else in the world in the middle of Australia where there's not, I don't know, maybe there's somewhere for you where you've been awed by the creation of Almighty God. Whether it's a volcano, whether, I mean, just think about it, where we've been in awe and at peace when we go and are in His creation. We look at the seas. There's so many things, and it's different. He also talks in there about right and wrong. Right and wrong. Who defines right and wrong? It's defined simply in the the Bible, I believe. If you don't have that worldview, if you don't adhere to the Scriptures, who's defining right and wrong in your life? Because it can be ever-changing. Some people tell us the, you know, the work we do at the round table, they say, oh, I don't know why you guys get involved in that. You can't legislate morality. You can't legislate morality. Isn't the basis of all law moral? Why can't I come down and steal your watch right now? Why can't I run a four-way stop? I may hurt someone. Why can't I steal, eat at a restaurant and just leave? The law says I can't. It's moral to not, who defines that? Because if we leave it up to us, and I think in some instances lately we have left it up to us, and we've seen where that's gotten us, right? Um, that, that's, that's, I referenced the Northwest Ordinance earlier, and that's where it talks about um, education and religion being a necessity of good government. I mean, they flat out said it. That's what was needed. You need that, that, that um, moral law. The Bible. The um, Bible. It's the authoritative word of God. 39 scriptures, or 39 scriptures, 39 books of the Old Testament, 27 in the New Testament, 66 total. Where they keep where they keep the books in the old, or they talked about the scriptures in the Old Testament. They kept them in the temple, right? You go to the temple to see the scriptures, and they would keep them there. And the New Testament talks about um, the temple and the scriptures. We're the temple, right? We're the church. We're the body. The scriptures are with us, and we're to go and tell others about the scriptures. About, but to tell others about them, we need to spend time in them and understand them and get to know him, get to know Jesus better, because that's going to help. That's going to help in that aspect. Um, Jesus gives us his word so we may know and enjoy him. The more you know him, the more you enjoy him. It's that simple. The more you know him, the more you enjoy him. You know, um, to me in looking at the scriptures and understanding the love that our Father has for each one of us, sometimes I view it like a, you know, like a, a, a family tree, um, a generational family tree. And family trees are changed or have been changed because decisions that have been made. Whether it's um, someone accepting Christ for the first time in their family and then passing it on. Now, they can't accept Christ for their children, but they can give them the scriptures. They can put them on that path. They can introduce them to Jesus and his teachings. We saw, uh, we saw Parker up here earlier, correct? We saw Parker with his family. Uh, They made the choice to dedicate their child to the Lord, to be raised in that environment, to keep that family tree going. I know people, we know people in this congregation that have made the decision um, to bring, to adopt children or foster children, to bring them into their home. And that changes their generational family tree. To take one of my best friends in the world, right now him and his wife are in the process of adopting a little girl. The, the, The conditions that this little girl was born into are some of the most horrific you have ever seen. It breaks my heart. And they're going to, she's a nurse at a hospital and they're going to adopt this young baby. That baby's generational family tree is changing because she's going to be raised in a home where they read the scriptures. And the word of God is evident, is evident. And they're going to raise her to get to know him. And that's what it's up to on all of us. We have to know him better. You know, I'll close with this. Um, In Revelation, in 3.20, Revelation 3.20, it tells us that Jesus Jesus tells us, knock at the door of our hearts. Going to knock at the door of our hearts. 
And it's up to us whether we answer that knock. I can tell you right now, I can tell you right now, for many years, I didn't answer the door when he knocked at my heart. The best decision I ever made in my life was April 30th, 2000. I answered the door when he knocked. My life wasn't perfect from that day forward. It was a lot of work, a lot of learning the scriptures. I still need to be more in the Bible to know him. But the more time I spend in this book, the more I know him, the more I enjoy him, and the more I understand how much he loves each and every one of us. Amen. Thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. You know, church, the, um, the heartbeat of this whole series, I said it in week one, is the more you get to know God, you can't help but fall in love with him. Okay, amen. I mean, when you really know God, like there's so many different opinions about God, right? And if you, if you tend to hear the wrong opinion about God, right, the wrong perspective about God, it's going to be hard to want to love him or connect with him. But when you know God, when you really know our God and who he is, you can't help but to love him. And it's the same with the Bible. How many times um, has the Bible just gotten a terrible rap? But when you really know what God's word is all about, it's not just a bunch of rules. I, Rob, I love... I love, I just was jotting some notes. I love what you said about, you started by saying the word of God brings joy. Like word that, that was kind of like, oh, okay. That was kind of edgy to start that way because how many times do we see the Bible bringing joy? Oh, it's that book I have to read every day or it's that book that tells me all the things. And But I love how you just, you, you said, um, man, when we're, when we're in the word and we're really following God's ways, it brings us joy. And just on and on, man, how the Word of God is, is, is what corrects our behavior, spending time with God, changing our family dynamics, and it's the final authority. Man, thank you. Thank you for sharing you. that. And when we really know God's Word, we can't help but to fall in love with His Word. Amen. Amen. So let's, let's just have that perspective. Church, we... We, uh, we encourage our church to, uh, to be in the Word of God every day and not in a legalistic way or a burdensome way. Um, like, I have to, but I get to. And I just want to encourage anyone out there that this might be something that would help you. Um, but every quarter we, we uh, supply at our church Cornerstone Chapel Bible book reading plans, and you can get them out in our foyer. But it's just our church just reads through the New Testament on a daily basis. And so I want to encourage you to grab one of those, stick it in your Bible and just follow along. But um, but the purpose of God's word is for us to get to know God more. And Amen. as Rob Amen. ended with that scripture in Revelation, I just want to close us in prayer today and just uh, invite someone here joining us online that um, perhaps you've never made that decision as Jesus is knocking on the door of hearts to answer that today. So can we just pray together right now? And man, if you're here today and you just sense um, God's presence in your life, you just are sensing that he is calling you and he's loving you and you just want to make a response to God today. And perhaps you, you feel far from God. Perhaps you, you know that you know you've met or never made that decision. And today's the day like you know what, it's my day, July 2nd, 2023 is my day that I want to make a response to, to the Lord and invite him to be a part of my life, the number one thing in my life. And if that's you today, I just want to lead you in an invitation to do that, just inviting him in. Just, just say, Jesus, thank you for never giving up on me. Yeah, just go ahead and say that. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on a cross when I was so far from you in my sin. You came and paid for my sin. And Lord, I desire to have a relationship with you, a real relationship. Thank you, God, for making that happen. I invite you in, in your name, Lord. And Lord, for all of us, God, we pray that we would 
fall more and more in love with you and also your word. We, it, it, it's, it, it doesn't work to say, I love Jesus, but I don't especially love his word. Um, Lord, if there's anyone here today that's struggling with, with, with that, I, I just pray that you would help us, God, to, to see the Bible in a whole different way, God, that it's, it's your love letter to us. It's your love letter to us. It's your, your guide of how we can have life. So, Lord, help us to love you and help us to also love your word, God. In Jesus' name, God. Help us to know the truth more and more in a day and age where truth is just something that seems not important to many. And I pray that, Lord, every husband and wife in this place would build their marriage on the Word of God. Lord, I pray that every parent in this church, that we would build our homes and raise our kids according to the Word of God. I pray that every business owner in this church would operate their business according to the Word of God and bring glory to you, Lord. Lord, help us as we are all neighbors to somebody, Lord, to live our life out in the marketplace, out in the world, according to the Word of God. Lord, until you come back, help us to stay true on the path of truth because we know that the devil is trying to lie to us every day because we know the Bible says wide is the way to destruction and many are on it and narrow is the way to life and few will find it. Lord, how do we stay on that way to life? Living according to your word, God. So God, help us to get on track, help us to stay on track, and help us to help others be on the right path. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Amen, church. Can we just thank Rob one more time? Rob, thank you, man. Thank you. Well, let's all stand. I want to ask our prayer teams if you would please make yourself available for a couple minutes on the sides of our sanctuaries. Church, if you need prayer for anything, our prayer teams are available. Remember what Pastor Melanie said about those half sheets. If you'd like to volunteer for Fireworks Fest tomorrow or do Growth Track next Sunday. We love you guys. We'll either see you tomorrow right here on our campus for Fireworks Fest, the 17th annual Fireworks Fest. If not, we will see you next Sunday at 9 or 11. God bless. We love you.